Thank you for being here, and thank you for the very important attention that you are paying to this very important subject. And I want to thank uh, all of you. It was very great. I'm hoping you glad that I was here in time to listen to you. It was uh, very, very nicely done. And you know, you hit all the important points, and you did it very, very well. So I thank you. They're terrific. Yes. <laughs> democratic process, the privileges, the rights of people cannot be taken for granted. You know, it's an easy thing that you like to do, but the fact of the matter is it can't be taken for granted. It's been put under pressure in a variety of ways for a long, long time. Now, we were, we were the great country. We set up the democratic process here in the United States of America back in the 18th century. And as a result of that, we, over time, got an awful lot of attention, a lot of people following those examples. But we also know that we've had a lot of people internally within this country doing everything that they could to try to stop it, to try to change it, to try to protect the magnitude of their circumstances and not protect the rights and privileges of individual citizens here in this country. So we had an interesting Supreme Court decision. <laughs> On January 21st, in a five to four ruling, and that's something that really has to be paid attention to, the Supreme Court issued a decision that impacted campaign finance more than any other event since the passage of the Fair Election Campaign Act which took place back in 1971. Prior to the ruling on Citizens United versus FEC, the Federal Election Campaign Act prohibited corporations and unions from using their own funds to make or directly influence federal elections, including TV ads, direct mail, and any other effort that explicitly supports or opposes candidates running in elections here in our country. Corporations and unions were required to establish political action committees, PACs, that helped separate funds to be used to advocate or contribute to candidates' campaigns, party committees, or other political action committees. In addition, Prior to the Supreme Court ruling, the 2002 Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act, commonly known as the McCain-Feingold Act, prohibited corporations and unions from funding broadcast advertisements from their general treasurer that were to be aired within 60 days of a general election or 30 days of a primary election. These types of broadcasts are commonly known as electioneering communications and are intended to clearly identify federal candidates, but do not always call for their election or defeat. But nevertheless, they have the intention to try to be influential in the outcome. Corporations and unions that wanted to air these types of messages within this time frame were required to establish a PAC, Political Action Committee. The Supreme Court ruling now enables corporations and unions to fund unlimited political advertising, provided that the advertisements are not affiliated with the campaign that is supported or opposed. In addition, corporations and unions are now free to fund electioneering communications from their treasuries and to do so at any time. The court ruled that these previous restrictions put in place constitute a ban on free speech, which they allege is a violation of the First Amendment. So what does this mean? What does this mean for elections and for the future? If we were to allow this process to occur, it will allow unmitigated spending on election expenditures which will inevitably result in more corporate influence on these United States elections. 
The more money that people have, the more influence that they will be able to exercise in the context of the outcomes of these elections. Take a real life example, financial regulatory reform. The major financial institutions do not want financial reform because the Democrats in Congress are more concerned with providing consumer protections than a corporation's bottom line. This Supreme Court decision opens the door for a flood of corporate funding for advertising from financial institutions. The targets of political smear campaigns will be members of Congress who are trying to make the responsible step of bringing reform to this industry. This scenario holds true for a wide array of initiatives that Congress hopes to address in the coming years, from global warming, things like immigration reform, the more fairness in the economy, and the maintenance of this democratic process, which is essential to the maintenance and continuation of this country. So how does this ruling relate to corporate ca consolidation? There's a growing dominance of corporations. During the time that I've spent in Congress, I have fought consolidation in the private sector in various capacities. The creation of huge corporate entities that have unimaginable amounts of money and, by extension, power, which becomes too big a liability to the American people, too big a liability to defend the rights and privileges of American citizens. I have fought media consolidation to increase competition, and to ensure that there is a variety of news sources streaming into our homes to get the real accurate information. The Media Ownership Reform Act is legislation that I authored, which would restore fairness in broadcasting, reduce media concentration, ensure that broadcasters meet their public interest requirements, and promote diversity, localism, and competition in American media. And this is something that has not been getting lately an awful lot of attention. And frankly, I'm a little disappointed that it hasn't got a lot of attention over the course of just this last year. Because if you listen to some of the operations that it bring about information distribution in this country, you get a different sense of the fact. Um, a, lot of, a lot of Fox News, for example. <laughs> Listen to the radio or watch the TV. Um, of course, you know, people like Rush Limbaugh 